All right, welcome to another um, uh, session of our uh, videos here. Uh, this one is going to um, work with the Adobe, um, uh, not the Adobe uh, RGB, but we're going to work with Pro Photo RGB. So um, again, I uh, showed you how in your um, in Lightroom here, how to actually go into uh, your um, uh, preferences. Now I'm on a PC here instead of a Mac, so you're going to see a little difference here. I'm going to go to edit on the PC and go down to preferences here and I'm going to change my preferences. Now my pop-up window popped up on my other screen so I'm going to move it over here so you can see it. I'm going to be using Adobe RGB uh, or I mean Adobe Photoshop to open this with. I want my file format to be PSD. My color space uh, that it is going to open in Photoshop is going to be Pro Photo and I also want it to open as a 16-bit file. My resolution is going to be 240. So this is the basis of what I want it to be. Um, you can set some of this other stuff down here, especially if you have another um, another external editing pro uh, program that you're using from um, from Lightroom. Uh, but generally, it's just Photoshop. So uh, you can always check some of the other preferences and see if they need to be changed. Uh, you can also change the color of uh, your um, um, you can change colors and stuff of your uh, a Lightroom catalog. There's all kinds of things that you can do in here, but uh, that's just the basics there that I want to make sure you've set. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to open this file in um, Photoshop. Um, I haven't made any real changes to this, so we can come over here and see there's really not been too many changes made here. Um, I haven't changed the vibrancy or the saturation, but I have made some textural changes, some dehazing, and also some highlights and things like that. And I've done my due diligence to make sure that I've worked on this image overall uh, to getting the sharpening, the luminance, and all of that, just like I've taught you how to do in class. Now, you're, you're supposed to have also done um, some color grading and worked with your um, color mixer or your tone curve in here. Um, please do that um, to make sure that you're ensuring that you're getting um, the best out of uh, Lightroom that you can. For this example, I'm going to open this example in Photoshop. So we're going to go to Photoshop to actually work on this. And um, I don't have a lot of color here, but I'd like to look at changing uh, some of the colors in the windows uh, to different color values, maybe leaving one of the windows. Uh, maybe I'll leave this window down here, but I'd like to change some of these other windows to other colors just to give it um, a whole different look. So I've got to use my selection tools to do that. Um, the, um, we're going to make sure that we are in Adobe. Um, our, uh, we're in Pro, well, we are in Pro Photo, uh, so we are in, an, in our Adobe RGB in 16-bit. So it opened us up in Pro Photo. So we're going to work with this. So I would make a lot more changes to this uh, using curves and uh, stuff, uh, for example, or whatever um, that I need to. To make uh, good um, good representations of my bricks and everything, I'm going to look at that histogram. I'm going to brighten this up just a slight bit and give it a little bit more curve. Uh, I'm going to give a curve to this just to get a little bit more out of my color and also out of my uh, values here. Um, I think the, um, I'd like to also maybe make some changes to the color of the bricks back here, uh, but for this video, um, we're just going to concentrate on the windows. So um, for the windows here, and since I'm in Adobe, um, uh, um, since I'm here in Profoto, we're going to use uh, hue and saturation as suggested in our project. So I'm going to zoom in here to make a selection. To get the selection, I'm going to zoom in really tight and close. Now this is going to be an easy selection here because this is just a door and uh, it's pretty square and rectangular here. So the marquee tool or the um, uh, the uh, polygon lasso tool is probably the best option for this. Since I'm changing one color at a time, I'm going to select this door and decide on what color I want to change it. Now, what, we're, um, what we can do is we can go to our adjustments here and choose uh, what, uh, what we want to use to change that color. There are a lot of different options. There is also selective color hue and saturation and the, some of these. You can play around with which one you find that works best, but I'm just going to show you hue and saturation for this project. So here's my hue, uh, our hue and saturation and lightness. 
If I increase the uh, saturation, you can see that it does some damage once it gets too far up here. So I'm not going to want to oversaturate, but I am going to pull the saturation up a little bit. I'm also going to pull the lightness up just a slight bit, so I get a little bit more depth in my, sh or a little less um, harsh shadows in here. Uh, so I pull that up just a little bit, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this until we get this to a color that we like. Let's go with green. I kind of like this nice um, yellowish green, and we're just going to go with green. And let's take a look at how this looks so far. So we've got a green window, and we got uh, several blue windows. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to leave this window blue, and up here I want to change this window to another color. Um, so I'm going to add this window into this, and so I need to make a new selection. And I'm going to come in here, and you can, as you saw in the lab video, you can make a, a say, do some save selections. That's always a good thing. Um, however, I have, or since I uh, created that hue and saturation after I made my selection, um, and I don't have to do the whole fill with white or anything like that. Um, here I've made my selection, but I need to get rid of these windows too, because if I don't get the interior of the windows out of here, that's going to be a problem with my selection. Um, you can see here in the hue and saturation for the other door down there, uh, that area there is actually um, showing up. If I hit the um, Alt key on my keyboard and click on this, it will show me, and I need to back off for you can, so you so you can see this. So I'm going to hit the, the uh, minus key here and um, come down here. And there you can see the actual selection and the end uh, the, um, of the uh, uh, image. Mm -hmm. uh, if I click again on the mask itself with the Alt mm -hmm. key, whoops, sorry, hit the wrong key there. We hit the Alt key, I can actually turn the mask off. So you can turn the mask on and off. You can also, if you hit the Shift key, uh, that will turn the mask on and off. Okay. So that's a possible, that's an option too. So I need to finish my selection up here. So I'm going to zoom in on my selection, come in here and get really tight on my selection. And I need to uh, subtract these window, uh, the interior of these windows. Uh, since these are square, the polygon lasso tool is going to work great. So I'm going to hit the option key until it turns into a minus, and then deselect these windows. So I'm going to have to go through and deselect each window, just like this. So I go through, I click um, start one, and I finish off a window just like this. Now, if you have problems with the deselection tool or the selection tools, um, just remember that if you go up to the toolbar itself, uh, that should allow you to get around in the uh, tool up here at the top a lot better uh, using those plus or the uh, addition and subtraction. Uh, if you are um, uh, wondering about other options uh, with the tools, uh, there are some other options with other keystrokes. Uh, but uh, for the most part, for this class, uh, this will do fine. Just for, do, uh, to, for this project, you can just use these tools just like I'm showing you here. Uh, so we're adding the, or subtracting these. Remember, I'm holding down uh, the, um, the uh, Alt key to actually get this to work. If I don't hold the Alt key down, it's going um, as I'm doing this. Uh, each I'd have to I can once I start uh, a selection. So for example, I click that and I start the, the selection. I don't have to hold the Alt key down until I get back to the next until I go to the next window because it's going to stay on Alt. So I hit the Alt key right now again, and um, that's going to allow me. I don't have to press it down and hold it the entire time. Um, and I just have to, each time I go to start a new deselection, I got to make sure that I hit that button. Sometimes I forget to, so I kind of sometimes like to just hold it down. Now I've got all those windows, um, the, win the actual glass panes um, subtracted. I've got the windows uh, ready to go here. I'm going to make a change. I do want to see color um, and what the color, what color I choose and how it's going to work with this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom out so I can see my change here. I'm going to go to Adjustments. And again, I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. Notice that as I did that, my mask pulled up here. And I've got a new mask. And it's only going to be the area that I've selected. Now we're going to uh, uh, up the saturation a little bit here uh, in that window. And we're also going to brighten it up just a bit. 
And this time I'm going to look for, I'm going to go this way and see if I can find me maybe a nice uh, red uh, to go with this. And, oh, there's that red uh, like that. Um, however, it's not, it's kind of more pink. So to adjust this, I'm just going to pull down on the, um, on the lightness slider until I get a nice red out of it. And that's much better. It's really going now with the same hues um, that I have in all the other ones here. Um, I, this is a, a good example of just changing and working with color in your imagery. And that's what I'm wanting you to do. Uh, then you come in here and do the rest of the things that you need to do um, that we've talked about in class, uh, such as dodging and burning and uh, uh, making uh, uh, other selections and working in the images. Um, and cleaning up uh, using the clone tool, the healing brush, uh, things like that until you have a really good image the way that you want it to look and once you get done with that make sure you save it out as a PSD and you pull it up in, in your Lightroom catalog and then export it. And there you have it guys, boys and girls, the, uh, uh, how to ma uh, make a selection of color and to uh, change that color through the hue and saturation options.